Donald Claude McGatlin was born the youngest of seven siblings in 1950. As many young boys in Denton, Texas did, he quickly fell in love with the town's favorite pastime, football. Practicing hard, he worked his way through the ranks and soon became one of Denton's prize athletes. When he was 16, in the prime of his young football career, Don married his high school sweetheart, Yvonne Pools. But due to a Texas law at the time, married couples were not allowed to participate in high school athletics. To continue playing the sport he loved, Don and his young bride moved to Colorado to play for the Golden High School Demons. He quickly became the high school star player, and even though he failed to win a state championship with the team, he won a football scholarship to Colorado State University. The transition to college football was rough. After being an all-state player and local hero, Don was relegated to backup player at the college level. Realizing that his athletic ability did not match his love for the game, Don changed his focus from playing to coaching. In their junior year, Don and Yvonne had a pair of twins, Troy and Jason. Yvonne dropped out of school to care for them as Don went on to graduate a year later with a degree in teaching. With his new family in tow, he headed to Lakewood, Colorado to secure a job at Dunstan Junior High. For the next few years, Don taught classes while assistant coaching boxing, track, and girls volleyball. As Don pursued a head football coaching job at the high school level, the McGatlins had their third son, Brett. Finally, in 1981, his years of hard work paid off, and Don was awarded the head coaching position at Green Mountain High School. Later that same year, the McGatlins were blessed again with the birth of their fourth son, Kyle. For the next decade, the Green Mountain Rams, under Coach McGatlin's guidance, would have several successful seasons, including a state championship. However, Coach McGatlin's devotion to the game and his players put a strain on his marriage, and in 1992, Don and his wife of 26 years divorced. The following film is an account, six years later, of Coach McGatlin's 1998 football season with the Green Mountain Rams. Let me explain, first of all, about the camp. This camp is not a fun camp. It is the hardest thing, son, you have ever done in your life. I can promise you right now. It's not Cub Scout camp. It's not getaway fun camp. It's not going to Albuquerque and playing basketball. This is a work camp. One goal and one goal only, perfection. We're going out, we're going after Wheat Ridge, we're going after Lakewood, we're going after Golden, we're going after that love of being the first game. And we're going after being as best we can be. I'm not sure we can win a state championship if we do great. I'm sure we can if we don't try. This is our attempt. If you still have a chance, we haven't got on the bus yet. If this doesn't sound like something you want to do, grab your stuff and sneak out the back. Don't go with us. Because if you go on that bus, man, you're locked in. You're locked in. Coaching high school football is um, it, it's a it's a great way to get your adrenaline flow up and down, <laughs> back and forth. It's just it's a very fulfilling way to do it. It gives you a chance to uh, to follow a kid through his lifetime, and and I have kids, doctors and lawyers, and <laughs> that come back and see me. It's really it's really fun. It's really interesting. Uh, you felt like you really definitely had a um, had an impact. You had a touch on people's lives. Well, this is my third son to coach. 
and uh, it, it's exciting to me. It also adds another dimension uh, that I hate to even think about in that uh, I really appreciate his effort he's put into his season, uh, his four years at, at Green Mountain High School. He's, he's been a, the heart and soul of every team he's played on. Uh, and he's a very, very unselfish player. And it's almost like I, I have a, an inner pain that he won't, they won't do well. Well, it's not what most people think. Like, people will think having a coach for dad could be bad. Oh, he's going to expect you to do more, and he's going to push you harder, and it's going to be terrible. I'd hate to have it. And some people have their view where they're like, well, having a coach for dad, hey, it's a free ride on varsity, man, free spot. But dad's really good about keeping the father-son relationship out of football. Like, when we get home, we'll talk about it and when we're sitting around dinner. And, but like when we're on the field, he treats me like everybody else. He makes me do everything else that everyone else has to do. He's a big key to the team because he has to have a good season for us to be good. All right, now your neck is going to be bowed, your head is going to be up, your point of attack is belly button to the numbers. That's what you're looking at. That's what you're aiming with your nose. But you're not Coach Steve, he's a good guy. He's real intense. After we win a big game, he'll run through head button everybody with their helmets. He's he's a good guy. He's a great coach too. If you ever want to have a good conversation with coach, you just, just talk about wrestling. That's all you, all you got to do is just talk about wrestling. You mean my favorite? I'd, ha I'd have to say Goldberg. You see, he's my top. See, my favorite is uh, Diamond Dallas Page. <laughs> In fact, I just ordered uh, one of his t-shirts that my little brother did too that we're going to be wearing around. Coach but... Gunko's favorite is uh, Dude Love. <laughs> <laughs> I don't even know what Dude Love is. Well, if you did, you'd be laughing. Hopefully my wife thinks I'm Dude Love. My personal goals for the upcoming season is to, to, uh, to join up with as many of the athletes as I can. Uh, by joining up, what I mean is to, to, to link together in our ambition, our goals. We feel like we can have a really good football team. This group of kids, since they've been freshmen, have always won. Uh, they've only lost one game as a group together, but you know, that's not necessarily going to make them champions. What I'm hoping makes them champions is a... Uh, a, a joining up together of spirits and, and goals and, and a very, very non-selfish approach to, to winning football games is what we're looking for. Well, notoriously, we're kind of a slow starter. Uh, you know, the past few years, we, we started out not too good. And uh, one of the reasons why, I think, is because other schools have camps right before their two-a-days, and uh, we haven't done that. And uh, by doing these uh, practices, uh, like we're doing them right now, four sessions a day and stuff like that, it's pretty intense. And they're learning a lot of stuff that normally they'd have to, uh, they'd have to wait until two-a-days started, and we're going to get that out of the way, and we'll be ready to do some uh, physical work. Pretty impressive. Other guys, uh, not so impressive. You know, kind of both ways. Uh, the thing I really like though is they get after it. Uh, the intensity part. You know, it kind of sucks me up too. Uh, you find a lot of times if, if they get pretty excited in here, they're going to get excited on the football field too. Orlando, buddy, come on now. Come on. Come on, beat the fight, come on, come on, hurry through. Four, eight, four, four, eight, one. Five, three, eight, five, two, seven. That's a better, that's a better run. Oh, five, four, one, five, oh, five. Hurry, 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 hurry. Four, six, six. Nice. Good start, Kyle, good start. Come on, come on now.
All in all, the whole day, we'll probably earn around $3,500, $4,000 for the first fundraiser of the year. I'm going to do as best I can. I have all the numbers out by Monday, Tuesday. Mm -hmm. But there was a way we could get most your, at least your first stringers. And you, do you know who you're, you know yeah. who you're Kind of a different kind of a coach. He's not the most organized coach, but yet he's good with the kids. With my oldest son, he walked away out of this high school feeling like they were a family. As far as eligibility goes, briefly, is if two teachers turn them in as having Fs, uh, they are automatically ineligible for the following week and can't play the game. Health-wise, uh, diet is real important during football. Water is very important. Supplements aren't that important. If your son gets a bruise, a contusion of any kind, don't heat it. Really, a rule basically for, for injuries is, is always ice first. If you keep the head up and out of contact as much as possible, even when it gets contact, it's the kind of contact that the spine can take. Any kind of lacerations, anything like that, just use common sense, keep them clean. Blisters are common this time of year on the feet. I had uh, one young man today who's got new shoes on and tore both the back of his feet off. We talk, we talk about fundraising. Uh, this is an example. We bought all new uniforms this year, and this is an example. Go ahead. These are all, oh, don't do this. <laughs> I swear if you started playing music, you'd get one of those uh, shows from them. Okay, next. Well, and if you've got some ear pads, you can put those in there. That one fit? That one looks like it fits. Yeah. Okay, you're done. Break down like a hitter. Hold it, everybody. Hold it. Let's get this breakdown right. Sure. Okay, break down is no man's diarrhea. All right, break down is down here. Down here. Foot down, head up, ready to hit somebody. Stop looking crappy. Look good out here. Come on, Stuart. Break down, feet apart, eyes in the middle. Break down. Ready, ready. A break down. Hands inside. Fight, fight, fight. All right, West. Hit the rhythm. Hit the rhythm. It's like punch, 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 work your feet. Feet, 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 feet. feet. One, two, three. Hit it. That away, Purvis. That's away. Now we're looking better. Let's go now. All right, guys, get in there. I want to hear a second. Let's get in tight. I want to see a couple things. So, uh, what's going to happen is, Kyle, you got to make sure Eric has the coverage. Brian, you got to make sure that Brian has the coverage so we don't have uh, some that's kind of screw up. Yeah, All right? Like Remember, everything they're stems they're out of uh, they're, they're staying in tight. They're two they're guys, you know, they're just right. wrestling around with them. Don't you recognize this okay. Okay. Yep. Yep. Let's do it, guys. Let's do it. All right? Now, I have a lot of confidence in you guys, or you wouldn't be here right now. We have worked you hard. You've been through camp. You're as good as anybody anywhere. Please feel that about yourself. I need courage now. That's a heck of a defense over there. I need courage. Get the courage in the comments, but we'll be okay. we will be all right. Okay, let's start off something solid and just get after people. Uh, right badger in some good tight good zone. Right badger in tight zone. On two, on two. Right badger! Right 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 Go off, back! Come on, O! Come on, O! Score, man. Set! Big old snap count first. Remember the count. Then assignment. Snap count, snap count, snap count. Let's go. Out here, out here, Josh! 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 <laughs>
Hey, him! He is! Run out and get him, buddy! Run out and get him! That's him! Hey! Get off! Get off! Get off! Alrighty, how'd, how'd you guys do today? Terrible. <laughs> we got a long ways to go. Real long ways to go. In fact, we may just forfeit the first five games. Probably a little early to be ranking somebody number two uh, like us with as, as much an experience. It doesn't bother me. I'm always happy that somebody at least thinks we're decent. Uh, we might be the number two team. We might be the number five team. We might be number ten team. I don't know. Uh, well, I don't mind it. It doesn't bother me. It puts a little pressure on us. But, you know, if you don't have pressure, then you probably shouldn't be playing the game. It's flying back, Orlando. It's flying back. Yeah. Sir, you're digging in. You're taking people somewhere. We're moving fronts. You understand that? Yes, sir. Starts with a hit, wide base, fast feet, and we're moving fronts, baby. We're on our way. Hit, hit! Well, the team we're playing first is uh, one of the, the best teams coming back in state. They only lost one game last year. They've only lost, I think, three games in three years. It'll be uh, two really pretty good teams against each other. The, the key is confidence right now. Which team has early confidence? I'd say they had their confidence shaken when they got beat in the playoffs last year, big. And uh, we're not sure we've developed ours yet. What is it? Don't want to believe you? I think I'd lie to you, Dan. It helps us, buddy. Widen the goddamn base. Please, after the hit, widen the base. Believe in it. Believe in it! Believe in it, man. Go, go, go! Uh, because our offensive line's a little bit novice right now and, and a little shaky. So we're going to go uh, real base running plays, but we're going to go pretty finesse with the outside game and the pass game. We're gonna throw some options at them. Uh, gonna throw some, some uh, sprint out pass against them. Uh, the running plays will be very, very basic and simple, only about four solid running plays. But we will have to finesse them, we feel like, to, to win the game. That's beautiful! That's beautiful! I love it. Hit. Everybody see that? Everybody see that? Everybody see that? What happened? What's the main thing didn't happen? Very important. See that, Chuck? Whoever moves his feet wins this battle. If you hit hard enough and we feet fast enough, you'll win the battle every time. That time he won it. He hit and moved his feet, took him all back. baby caller. Get to a thigh. I expect it to be something like a 27 21 football game, and I truly can't say who will have 27. Uh, would not shock me either way. We can beat them, they can beat us. I don't think either team would blow the other team out. We're not those two types of teams. Uh, I hope not. <laughs> uh, I think it's going to be a really good, classic beginning game. You got to get ready to go. Everybody over? Now, I told you in practice, I'll tell you again. This is nothing more than a glorified practice. Our goals, everything we have for us, are down the road. However, Green Mountain has come to town. We're now in somebody else's field, in somebody else's town, and we came to conquer. We didn't come just to show them a good time. Now they know that. Trust me, I watched them watch you walk on the field. It's cool. Because they're going, that's them, man. That's those Rams. That's those guys. I remember they beat Longmont. I remember they beat St. Forest. That's them. You can just feel it. It's the respect we work for, we gain. We never back off of it. And we play so dang hard that they were honored to get beat by us. And after the game, they come and say it was an honor the way your kids played, with class. All right? On the sideline, we are so positive each other, it's like a family. It's like they're attacking our family. You take care of your guys on the sideline. There will be huge mistakes because it's an early season game. That's okay. <laughs> it's funny how that works. You make mistakes and you get better. You get better. We've had teams not make mistakes in the first game. Did we win state that year? Hell no. We had team make some mistakes. They scared me first game. Did we win state? Hell yes. So it's all right, isn't it? We'll make mistakes. They're gonna make more. Everybody in here? Go, 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 go,
and you fight like hell to protect each other. Our defense, I'm going to tell you right now, there's not another one like it. I don't believe it. I think you're fixing to show that. I don't think there's another defense like ours around. But what I saw, all right, that's protect each other, that's leaving each other. We have three things, man. We have three things. Commitment, courage. God love courage. And we'll build this confidence. We'll be on stop. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thy is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Let's go, fellas! Let's go! Unfortunately, for the Rams, the game doesn't start the way they wanted it to. After returning the opening kickoff to midfield, Loveland drives the rest of the way on the ground to score their first touchdown. With their second touchdown, it's starting to look like a blowout in the making. Unable to move the ball on their second drive, the Rams are forced to punt. If Loveland scores on this drive, the game could be over, but the resilient Rams fight back and get their first points of the year on a safety. Wasting no time, the Rams immediately get the ball back and score their first touchdown of the year with their running game. With that touchdown, the Rams are only five points down at the half, and suddenly we have a game on our hands. When the third quarter begins, the Rams pick up where they left off and swiftly score another touchdown, taking a point lead into the fourth quarter. But this is Loveland's home field, and they aren't just going to roll over and play dead. In consecutive drives, Loveland pounds the ball down the Rams' throat. First, with a two-play drive to score the go-ahead touchdown, then with a reverse that goes the distance for another touchdown. Suddenly, the Rams find themselves down by 12 with just over six minutes left in the game. If they have any hope of winning this game, they would need to score and score at once. And that's just what they do with a quick pass from junior quarterback Andy Steuben to wide receiver Ryan Brown. Now only down by five with two minutes left, the Rams only need a touchdown to win. With virtually no time left on the clock, the Rams go for the win. Unfortunately, it's not meant to be. And the Rams have to open the season with a loss. The Loving game was a typical first game of the season against a really good opponent. Uh, I got a sleeping giant type of an offense right now. I saw some things that I go, whoa, if we just do that, we could be fantastic. It's pretty exciting. Yet, you, you have to deal also with the depression of losing the game because we lost by five points. Um, I, I have no doubt in my mind that we're so close with the inexperienced kids getting that experience of being great. It's how we handle it from here on out. So I guess the problem is, you, you, you know, we, we went and made the mistakes to lose the game uh, and that depresses you and the team feels bad and then on the other side you know that there are correctable mistakes that we can do so much better with. Uh, Kyle had the worst game of his life. Uh, you know he's not going to do that very often, uh, and we still should have won. I, I don't know. It just seemed like it just wasn't happening. Nothing was clicking right. I mean, fumbles and interceptions, and it was more of a mental loss than a physical loss because they weren't pushing us around anywhere. The funny thing is you're dealing with young psyches who can go down so hard with something like this, and then you're dealing with old coaches who do the same thing. <laughs> uh, I've been contacted by a bunch of schools, including CSU. They told me they were interested in me and they want to keep talking to me. Finally, when I got a chance, I figured I'd go up and watch CSU and Sonny Lubick. And it was cool to see actually go to a CSU game where my dad played for. And I think it'd be fun to play for them. I mean, I haven't really seen the town much, but from when what we drove by, it looked it looked pretty nice. And I don't know, the, the fans are pretty cool there. It just looks like a nice place to go. I'll, I probably will play, but that's not really a big concern on my mind. It will be once the season's over, but I would just want to concentrate on my last year. In their second game, the unthinkable happens, and the Rams get blown out. How was your weekend after that? Pretty tough? Pretty hard to sleep that night. 
Asky felt better after Bronco game. I slept good last night. Uh, night before last, I didn't sleep at all. Got up, finally gave up, got about seven, I don't know, six or seven Sunday morning. Put that film on, watched the offensive film, and uh, it's I, I still, there's a lot of things, a lot of questions in there uh, about what was happening, why it was happening, a, a lot of uh, disappointment in my eyes and stuff. Probably one of the most humiliating games we've played in a long time. Uh, a lack of intensity, almost a shell shock kind of a, of a feeling with the kids. Uh, very unaggressive. Uh, almost like they were removed from the game watching themselves go through the actions but not really doing anything with, with a lot of harder intensity. But let's first, before we, and, and what you guys did might have been wrong. You went home, you hashed it over with parents, with friends. We're all hurting so bad. And if they're hurting the way I think they're hurting, uh, it might be the most inspirational thing we could have done. They have a choice. Uh, if we can sell them that they can go to work and be a good football team, we can go win state. We can win them all. I mean, there's no doubt in my mind. If they basically lose all confidence in themselves and us, then we'll be a 500 ball club. I'm, I'm more excited now than I think I was the first week because I think I've come up with some things. Coach D and I have talked a lot. Both of us feel pretty good about some things. Not how we played, but where we're going to go. At what point do people totally lose confidence in themselves? Does it take one failure, two failures, three failures? Get the right shoulder on his, on his groin right there in his crotch with your head on the inside, not the outside. It's a combo block. That's coaching. That's teaching. I can teach you to do that a lot better. The human psyche is a weird one when it comes to sports, how people respond to bad situations. Same thing in life. We got the kick out block. Look at Calder. Look at this. It's all walled off except for one man. And there he is. Look at this. Dree. Touchdown. They're close. We need some luck right now, real bad. <laughs> Shut. Hey. Oh, God damn it. What are you doing out there? Get back here. Why are you up there? Way up too high, Ken. You're not going to ever know. I'm the I ain't killing backwards. I want you running all fours right through his thighs, big guy. That's going to get us killed. Sure. Good idea. Now let's go the other way. Well, Wheat Ridge is, is a big physical team. They're probably the most physical team we play in our conference as far as actual uh, lineup and smash mouth football. Uh, they're an intimidating type of team. They want to play that way. They, they live by that. Uh, they're the team that knocked us out of the playoffs last year at the very end of the game. That game was a real important game because if we won the game, we won the conference, which we got a free ride to the playoffs. If we lost the game, we took fourth in the conference because uh, there's four teams tied right then. And if we took fourth, we wouldn't get in the playoffs. We went ahead with uh, six minutes to go in the game. Uh, they drove down. Uh, they scored a field goal. They went ahead. We broke the ensuing kickoff with a minute 19, I think it was, left. And then we drove down and completed a pass in field goal range to win the game. We did the hell Jane in the 25 yard out. And uh, I caught it. And when I caught it, I had to slide because it was down towards my feet. So I slid down like this. And the officials called it out. It wasn't out. I mean, it was around our sideline. The official blew it. But what's worse is our quarterback, went, little Andy, my quarterback for this year, just went berserk on the official. The crowd just erupted and started throwing candy at him. And he got flagged and they moved us 15 yards further back with four seconds to go, which took us out of any contention to win the game. And afterwards, the fans were pretty pissed off and they chased the refs off the field and broke out the refs' windows. And but it left a real bitter, sour taste in everybody's mouth. I saw the film today and I, I'm still angry that it, the way it happened. Uh, wasn't fair. I don't know. It was, it was a pretty dark moment in Green Mountain history. Hey, Jed. Black electric football to play with cones. Take your nickel and try and run through without being touched. <laughs> 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 used to be a blast. Basically, that's it. They were planning on getting to our quarterback who's leading the state now in passing. We're planning on keeping them away. And whoever wins that little game will probably win the game. Now, like I was saying, they base every year their defense off of being real solid up here keeping people off of him they don't want anybody to get to him if you lose this one like i said earlier you have to scramble like crazy to even have a chance to go to the state playoffs and 
I'd say you, whoever loses this one is, is in trouble the rest of the year. If you win this one, you, you know, there's no guarantees, but at least you put yourself in the driver's seat to have a chance to achieve. And our only goal as a team is always to get in those playoffs, to make it to that next level and see what happens then. Guys, we gotta, you gotta start talking and you gotta start talking loud. Loud, I wanna hear a lot of talk over here. I just never feel totally prepared. I, we could use two more weeks, you know. I'd, I'd love to have two more weeks to prepare for this team. Um, but at the same time, you know, they're in the same boat we are. And uh, hopefully uh, we have taught them enough and they do know it enough that we'll go out there and uh, play well. A big game like this early, you lose. It's hard to bounce back, you know. Uh, hopefully we have the material that if we do, we can. I've seen teams not, seen coaches not bounce back. We're heading back out right now. Hurry up, hurry up. Take a deep breath. Just a couple of little short things to say. Keep your heads up, look for tricks. Don't jump off sides on the punts, things like that. Remind yourself of playing good, smart football. The other thing is, guys, there's two types of people in the world. We've always talked about this. There are people who go for it and people who don't. The people in this room are here because they go for it. That makes you a winner no matter what happens. To you. We're not afraid to go for it. As they say up in the cowboy land, we're not scared of nothing. And we're sure not scared to go for first. And that's what we're doing. And that's all you gotta remember. As long as you are going for it with all your heart, whatever happens, happens. You can feel great. And we are going for it. I promise you that. As the game begins, the Rams follow Coach Mack's plan to a tee. They take the opening kickoff and drive it the length of the field to score the game's first touchdown. But then something happens that will turn the game around. The Rams fumble as they're driving for their second score. Wheat Ridge quickly takes advantage of this opportunity and three plays later scores their first touchdown. From this point on, the Rams look like a ship at sea during a hurricane. Andy Steuben threw passes that fell incomplete, or worse, intercepted, or even worse, intercepted and returned for a touchdown. The game ends with the Rams losing 14 to seven. Although Kyle played a great game, it's obvious the losing is getting to him and the team. Rice! Hey, Rice, shut up! Rice! Rice! Hey! Rice, we need you right now, buddy. We need on, you to Rice. get tough. Get over here. Come on, Rice. You know what this means, Rice. Rice? Look at me. You know what this means? Absolutely nothing. You understand that? It all depends on what you've got in here, son. I'm starting to wonder now. Because all that means is we've got to win the rest of our games. Hey, you got to win them anyway. Now, you're going to hate this film. Because we have every opportunity to put this team away in the first half. Put them away. And we fumble, bumble, and give it away. We gave this game away. But it's history. Not a thing you can do about this now is your chance. Sir. All right, but well, we got to win the next one, and the next one, and the next one, and the next one. If you guys want to go to the playoffs, if you don't want to go to the playoffs, then let's just hang our heads and give up. How's that? We can do that. Or we can decide, yeah, we want to go to the playoffs. Let's correct our mistakes. Let's play harder. Let's practice harder. Let's coach harder. <laughs> We can do that just as easy. This is not ending of anything. But you're gonna to have to make some commitments, guys. You're gonna to have to make some commitments. We cannot fumble the game away, throw the game away. I mean, it doesn't mean anything at all. We can still win this championship because Rich beats him. <laughs> Unless you wanna go ahead and give up. Because if you do, let me know, because I got other things to be doing. And I think you do too. So let's make that decision right now. Let's just play at being a football team, or let's be a football team. Now, I can go either way. If you don't really want to go to the playoffs, please just step up and say, you know, I don't want, I don't want to put that into it. And then that gives me a chance to kick back and not freaking die inside like I'm dying right now. Because this doesn't feel very good. Maybe somebody.
who's in charge, says, let's really test those guys. Let's really see what they're made of. Maybe they're not, they don't deserve to go on. Now we find out, Schaefer. Maybe God finds out what we're really like, huh? I can also guarantee you that if you pull totally together and decide we're not going to lose another football game this year, you can do that too. <laughs> you know what? I'm leaving that entirely up to you guys. You know what, you know, Dre? At my age, I'm going to say, Dre, you and the boys want to go win it. I'll help you all I can. Fair enough? Yes, I do. <laughs> you guys are good kids. You gave that away. Gave that away. Kind of an old Texas cowboy that's, you know, come in off the ranch and. He was tough as nails, man. He was like a, like a piece of rusted barbed wire hanging on a fence since, you know, since time began. Highly motivated, very driven uh, human being. He's funny. He's always, always has something to goof around about. A hard worker, unorganized but organized. He's a balding, lanky, crazy old coot. A man of very high highs and very low lows. <laughs> <laughs> and very little in between. He's a very nice and uh, fun-loving person, but he's also a competitor. He hates to lose. It was real hard. I mean, not only making myself feel, or feeling bad for myself, but then seeing everybody else's faces. I mean, not everybody's faces, but the seniors that you know who care, and who this game meant a lot to them. And then plus the fans, because we had pretty good fans there that game. <clears throat> it just it was real hard to, to see all that and to come to school the next day and hear all the people asking what went wrong. and It's, it's just real hard. I take it personal. Uh, as, as a, uh, and I always have, I always felt like team takes on the personality and the character of the coach a lot and that makes me feel pretty bad about where this team is because we're playing un, uh, what's the term, unmotivated ball right now. We're just going through motions and I, you know, so I, I, I do, I take it like I personally am, am failing. It just doesn't seem like most of our team cares that much. I mean, we got we got size, we got speed, we got more talent than most people in the state. But uh, we I don't think we had that much heart, or we did have that much heart. Why a team catches fire, why it doesn't catch fire, you know, I knew that I'd write a book and make a million dollars. Um, if they catch a little spark, it's almost like starting a forest fire. It can flame up and be just huge. And that's all we're hoping for is to spark in this next game. The potential is there. We all know that. We've seen that from the very beginning. The spark hasn't hit yet. And we need something to, to set that little flame going. And then once it does, I think it can be just a, a massive fire as far as we can just dominate. It's do or die now. And everybody knows that. It knows that's all. It's the playoffs from here on out. It knows once we lose, it's over pretty much.
Next, next. Ready. Knock him out, Doss. Knock him out, Doss. Next. That's two. Knock him out, Doss. Pass him, guy. Knock him out. That's three. Oh. Knock him out, Jesse. Knock him out, Jesse. Come on. Ready. Just knock him out. Four more for the record. Knock him out. There we go. Come on, Dad. Terry. Square up to it. Terry. Come on, Terry. Oh. The last man. Come on, buddy. Stay there. Take him off. Stay there. During our homecoming week, we do this thing called powder puff, which is uh, the guys teach the senior, the senior guys teach the senior girls how to play, and the junior guys teach the senior or junior girls how to play. And we have a big uh, girl football game at the end of the week, and so we're doing our our special teams on Sunday. We asked if we knew anybody who could kick, and we knew we had a lot of soccer girls, so we had all the soccer girls try out. And Jen shows up, and she's a soccer girl, of course, and she starts nailing the ball, just left and right. We're just doing extra points. We're like, wow, that's pretty good. So we kept scooting her back, and left and right, boom, boom, boom. She, she hit him from all hash marks. We kept moving her back and back, and finally she gets to the 45 and just bangs it through there, and we're like, oh, my God, that's awesome. And uh, so I told my dad about it the next day. I'm like, yeah, you got to see this girl. She's amazing. Of course, he didn't believe me, and I, I told everybody in the world, and then, so he didn't believe me, but I told her brother, who's one of our coaches, Coach Baker, I'm like, you got to see your sister come out here. So him and uh, our defensive back coach, Gunkel, came out and watched our powder puff practice after our practice. And they saw her just nailing them left and right. And so finally they convinced my dad to bring her out to pra practice and watch her. And of course, she goes to the 45, lines up, warms up, just hits them left and right again. And so finally dad decides to have her sign up, and, and that's pretty much what happened. Oh, I had no idea we had anybody in the school kick like that. Just wonder if there's any other ones out there lurking around. Uh, she has one of the strongest legs I've ever seen on anybody. I mean, she kicks out of a cannon. I think with a little uh, little reps under pressure, give her a chance. She'd be a great kicker. I think she's going to be okay. That's what I want this to be, a blast. I want us to have fun. I want us to enjoy this. I want to do things like we do when we start rolling and winning and kicking butt and go put hot dogs out in the park and play volleyball and still work on our football, but enjoy each other. Have fun with each other in the right kind of way. It is never, ever will ever be fun if you lose. Nature of this society and our world. So first we got to win. We've got to commit ourselves. You're only intimidated by people when you give them permission to intimidate you. Nobody intimidates us ever again. After a relatively quiet first quarter with neither team able to move the ball, Green Mountain finally puts together a drive to score the game's first points. Unfortunately, it doesn't take long for Arvada to retaliate as they take the ensuing kick off the distance to tie the score at 7. But not to be outdone on scoring quickly, the Rams score on their next possession with a deep pass to their tight end. At the half, the Rams have a 14-7 lead. In the third quarter, the Rams continue to control the ball and score another touchdown on a reverse to Kyle. The score is now 21-7 and the Rams appear to be rolling. But Arvada stays the course and drives the length of the field to score their second touchdown. Then in the fourth quarter, after both teams have stalled on offense, Arvada gets the ball back and drives the field to score another touchdown. But instead of going for the extra point to tie the game, they opted to go for the two-point conversion, 
and they get it. Arvada now has a one-point lead. After the kickoff, Green Mountain gets the ball on their 20-yard line with just a minute 27 left in the game. On their first play from scrimmage, they get a huge chunk of it with a deep pass across the middle. But the unthinkable happens on the next play, and the Rams lose a ton of yards when their QB Andy Steuben gets sacked. With just 28 seconds left and a long field goal their only hope, Coach Mack calls on none other than Jen Baker to kick her first field goal ever. She splits the uprights and the Rams win their first game of the season. Any good or great team that didn't have to overcome adversity, that tends to make you closer and more of a team. That is amazing. Nice job. I think actually Jim Baker might have been the very spark we were looking for to ignite this team. The big key though with us is our goal is to get in the playoffs. Beat Conifer next week, we're in the playoffs. That's what we're trying to, trying to get accomplished. The Rams easily beat Conifer and capture a state playoff berth. With the win, they also earn the right to play in the league championship game against the winner of the other division in Jefferson County, Dakota Ridge. All right, you're in the playoffs. Is that enough? You want to quit there? No. No. How about we go win a championship next week? Yeah. We're going to sit you down and we're going to show you the personnel at Dakota Ridge with their family. We're going to say, we're going to give you a roster, everybody. We're going to say, here, here's the guy, Randall, that you're going to destroy. Right here. Here's his number, his mother's name, his girlfriend's phone number. <laughs> <laughs> let's uh, let's stay on track here a little bit with what we're doing, not just stand around, because this is important. I think it's one of the most important things we're going to have. Uh, let's talk about personnel, first of all. Let me first, and we talk about, we're going to talk about this a little bit, tell you where we're at with Steuben right now and what's going on. Okay, and I had a bad day with Steuben yesterday, and it was my first one. He was in the toilet, he was down, uh, and as soon as Steuben gets that way, he has a ripple effect on me and everybody around him. Okay, and the talk I had today was, and we need to think about more talks to more people like this when this starts happening, when someone starts bringing other people down. And the basic talk was this, the ripple effect thing is if, if, you, uh, if you're positive about what we're doing, if you're excited about what we're doing, it ripples on everybody in that offense. Mm -hmm. I mean, you just feel it. When he's pumped up a little bit, like he was today, but that's after the talk. <clears throat> I said it makes a difference. If you're negative like yesterday, my whole offense goes into a... a, a, a Deadline. Yeah, he affects everybody. <laughs> you flat line your thing. Yeah. All right. He needs to understand that, that how important. And I, I think I got it across. I had a good talk. I felt really good about the way he responded to it. And uh, and I told him point blank, and I, and I haven't done enough of this. And you guys tell me this. But I said I'll venture, and I don't want to. But if I think that that's the kind of thing that's happening, is you're giving a negative ripple effect to the team, and you don't believe in what we're doing, 
I can't play with you. I have to bench you. Yep. And he, he, he popped his head up and he looked and he goes, okay. For us to, lead, to win the league championship, we need to beat this next team, Dakota Ridge. Yeah, I think we've got a chance, and it's going to be a tough game. I mean, they're number one in state. Go to Ridge is the best team we've seen in the state this year in 4A, I think. And they're good, but uh, we, we know how to stop them, and we've stopped them every year. We kind of hope what we've done is set them up over the last few weeks because what we've been doing is not really what we plan on do, doing for them. But I think they're going to have a real vendetta of coming out and beating us, and I'm, I'm pretty sure we, we can get them. It'll be a good game, though. Uh, even though the only game they lost last year in the league was to us, they still went on and were league champions. Uh, if we have a, any psychological advantages over good teams, we might have one over them, we hope. We'll see. Okay, let's, let's start on this series, lead series. I'll tell you what, kind of what I have in mind here. A split dive pitch. We'll pitch to Schaefer. We fake the split dive to Rice and pitch it coming around to Schaefer, but we have the slot back going the other way. So I just think we pitch it quick to Schaefer. These two guys, because of Schaefer's speed and ability, will be eliminated. They have to hesitate for this. Mm -hmm. I don't know what he'll do. Schaefer can outrun him. Crack on him, lead up on him. We also have a pass for Schaefer, a split dive pitch pass. Where he pitched to him and he makes the, the pass here or backside. If we can get these guys out of the, out of the action, that sure helps a lot. We also have slot motion zone counters. We have our base stuff. A couple of split tosses, one out of Bailey's. We have under screen out trips. Uh, everything's in. What we have to learn, what we have to get down real good today is a tight lead series. I don't think they can stop it. Perfect. Turn this way. Do you want to head on, coach? No, they get off. Conference. I mean, those first games were actually a real good eye opener for us. When we first came in here, uh, we were expecting just to sweep everybody, and and we didn't really, I don't know, we just, it seemed like we didn't really care as much. I mean, some people cared too much, and some people didn't care at all. We're time. beginning to okay, depend on our teammates more than we were, we were before, Two. than just individual stuff. Right so it's back there, it is a perfect situation for us. This can only benefit us. This is what we need to play the number one team in state. Two weeks before we go into playoffs. It's perfect. We'll know exactly where we're at, what we need to do, where we need to go. I think you're going to be awfully happy because you had the best week of practice we've had in two years. Bar none. Starting Saturday night, eating pizza, watching film. That's when it started. That's when you set your mind to this game. You watch. That's when you guys decided. Every single one of them. It's funny we talked about afterwards. Now, every single one you picked up on who they were, how they played, what they did the very first night, and they weren't even really back in their game yet, so fine. Once again, the Rams start off a game on the wrong foot. On their first play from scrimmage, Andy Steuben throws an interception and gives Dakota Ridge an easy six points. Then late in the second quarter, Dakota Ridge kicks a field goal, putting them up by nine at the half. It's not until the third quarter that Green Mountain's offense finally wakes up and they score their first points off a fly pattern to Kyle. Now the Rams were only down by two and back in the game. With just seven minutes to go in the game, Dakota Ridge scores another touchdown and goes up 19 to seven. But the Rams aren't finished yet, and on their next series, they go to number one, Ryan Brown. He scores a quick touchdown, making the score 19 to 14. Regrettably, the Rams' defense fails, and Dakota Ridge marches down the field to score another touchdown. But now with just four minutes left, the Rams find themselves down by 11. But Green Mountain, with their new never say die attitude, drives the field and scores a touchdown with a pass down the middle. Now with only 31 seconds left, the Rams need a miracle to win. And that's just what they get when they recover their own onside kick. With just 25 seconds left, the Rams go to work. They open up with a deep pass down the middle to put them within striking distance. Now with just 10 seconds left, the Rams have enough time for one last play. Unfortunately, 
it isn't meant to be, and the game ends with Steuben getting sacked. Dakota Ridge wins the championship 25-20. Who you guys going in? I mean, it's like I told you before the game, this is a great gauge for us to see where we really are. And we're right there. One more step, man, you can win it all. That's the number one team in the state. I guarantee you it is. Them or, or, or Rampart, I haven't seen They're both two great football teams. So right there. Whistle! I couldn't convince you. But now you know it. Don't you? Now you know it. There's no doubt about it. They're right there with those guys. You can feel it. Dang it. That first half, you didn't believe it. Now you feel it. Don't you feel like they were lucky? How many times have you scored down there? I just hope to God, I pray to God, that you understand what you can be in the next few weeks. I just hope you do. I hope you don't let it pass you by. Because it'll be something you'll remember the rest of your life. I am proud of you. I am proud of your second half. I'm proud of that every second effort. We scared the hell and we should have beat them. They know it. And they know it. See how happy they were to win it? Next time they face us, Dawson, they're not going to beat us. I promise you. Okay? <laughs> and you know when it's going to be? December 5th, baby. Let's go here. Yeah. If you don't want me to do this, I won't. And believe me, I've gone back and forth a hundred times. But my heart tells me we need to get some things out in the open and deal with it or we're kind of done. We're having some motivational problems, we feel like some of the kids. I, I, I've seen teams like this before. I don't think they like each other. I don't think they're a team that, that enjoys being around each other. I think we need to take a strong goddamn look at ourselves, <coughs> me included. We're going to talk real hard about the tragedy of the real loss is not the games but the loss of friendships and, and high school football, uh, those people who play it, uh, usually their very best friends for life are kids that came from that. And these kids are missing that. Uh, I, they, there's something missing. They don't understand, you know, that this is going to all be over with and forever. And the guys they'll remember, the guys that they struggled with and played with. and. Oh, I want to bring that home somehow. I had some friends in Vietnam. The Viet Cong dropped a grenade, a Chinese-made grenade, in the middle of their platoon. They were all dead. This little private, no one really thought much about or ever talked to very much, dove on them. They blew him into pieces. The rest of them lived. We had no grenade jumpers. I'm sorry, and that's the part that hurts. And the part that got me, that blew me up was, I have a team that doesn't even like each other. I believe it. If we can find out a way in five days, Dreesen, to make this important enough to all of us, I think, I think we can do it. At least we can give it a hell of a shot. I think right now our biggest concern is uh, that we turn the ownership over the team to the kids and they decide if they want to do it. I mean, they're good enough um, that they can win it. What we want to do is basically turn it over to kind of the team with U6 being kind of the directors. And it came about because we there was a chance we could have given up our spot in the playoffs to another team uh, if this team didn't want to go on. Uh, I didn't think that would ever happen, but I didn't know. Might be some kids on there who want to. Uh, bottom line is this. As kind of the board of directors for what's going on, you guys are in charge. Uh, practices or? Conditioning, practices, getting people charged up or not charged up. One of the first things you can do if we, <coughs> in fact, read you. Now, you were trying real hard in the game the other day. I mean, you're trying to boost everybody up, and you actually went down. You know, it's like you were trying to get away else and you didn't have your game, your normal game at all. But it's hard when you kind of feel like you're by yourself doing it, mm -hmm. you know. Now at least the six of you know that each of you are kind of our little secret board of control, if you will. And for instance, if, if you can get two or three other people to commit, 
then that gives us, you know, 10. If you can get three or four other people to, to really commit to what you want to do and make it something important to them, then it gives us 14. You pick up another five or six, you know, now we're at 20. See what I mean? You don't, we don't have to have everybody, but if we get 20, 30 kids who just dying to go on and keep playing. It's all contagious. Yeah, it'll happen. Okay, uh, let's go flanker motion, 35 on the screen. Here we go, here we go, let him get set, check him out, hurry Kyle, hurry. Everybody set. Go, get a block, get a block, get a block. Oh, on your back is right here, but you're safe, good. <laughs> get set now, we'll get set now, Kyle get set, now they're ready. Go! Well, it like a boy. Hey, how do you want me to do that? Right. Run a high, do you want me to stand? On a cold and wet night in November, Green Mountain plays the Alameda Pirates in one of the sloppiest games of the year. Continuously throughout the first quarter, each team takes turns fumbling or throwing interceptions. It isn't until the beginning of the second quarter that the Rams finally get back on track. After a long run, Coach Mack decides to stay on the ground and run another play right up the middle. The play works and the Rams score their first touchdown of the playoffs. From this point on, the Rams never looked back and won their first playoff game 19-0. The sleepover was, was an idea of um, no one's ever done it before, let's do it, let's see what it'd be like. We did, um, oh, what do you call it, the trust building where you fall out of the ladder and you catch, you catch each other. That really felt good. I think the kids enjoyed that. It was a team unity thing. Probably the best thing out of the sleepover was our small group sessions with the coaches where they went and they talked about their greatest fears, uh, what they thought championship team should be like. Championship atmosphere is when everyone on the team gets along, but they may not like each other as people, but they still respect each other as teammates. Uh, championship atmosphere is an emotional high where everyone is a friend, um, friendship, freedom, hard work. We got some things, some ideals expressed uh, that I think clarified in some of the young minds, you know, why are we really here? What are you really trying to do? My team is pretty much my family, and it's my life. It's just a place I look forward to coming to. My team is unity, friendship, a lot of laughs, in school every day, all guys and one girl, going to be a success, success and a long time in the making. Monday, I was pretty brutal on you guys. I jumped on you, I ran on you, and I still love you. I mean, we gotta do it. Most important goal for me is that when this is over, 20 years from now, you remain best friends. You fought together. You jumped on grenades for each other. And nobody, nobody can take that away. That's the Guys, we're our own fans out there. We do have a few vocal people. They'll have hundreds and hundreds. We're our best friends, and we're our best fans. Sideline, we need you. We need you. Be with us. Be prepared. Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Let thy kingdom come. Let will be done. From the opening snap, Green Mountain takes control of the game and never looked back. After scoring the first points of the game with their defense, the Rams come back on their first offensive series and score another touchdown with a quick slant pattern. 
A couple of series later, the Rams run a draw that goes the distance for another score. By the fourth quarter, Pueblo Centennial had lost all momentum as Green Mountain continues to charge forward. The Rams finished the game off with the same slant pattern that scored them a touchdown in the first quarter. The game ends with the Rams winning 35 to 21. Green Mountain's back. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Yeah. The mystique's alive. They gotta deal with us. They gotta deal with us, Jack. <laughs> All right. We ain't going away either, fellas. We ain't going away. We'll do whatever it takes, and you've shown me that already. But we will not sleep together Wednesday night. I promise. Yeah. Tackle. No, off. Defensive tackle. Play a little tougher. He's running you back like your own skates. Come on. I'm concerned about them making the necessary jumps as a team. I mean, we were a very average team a few weeks ago. We're a little above average now. We need to be a little bit more above average <laughs> to win this next game, and then it goes that way all the way to the finals. Go, 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 get it, go, get it, go, get it! All right, bullshit! Steady! Put your head in his chest! Come on, let's go! Hurry up! That won't get it! Head in his chest, Ed! Uh, the difficult schedule Wing motions, flip dive. was designed for what I thought would be one of the best teams I would ever coach. Uh, these kids as freshmen and sophomores had a, a 17, 18 game win streak going. And I kind of designed this whole year to be something really special. Um, knowing these kids from when they were so small, I just, I just thought they would uh, put themselves in a better position. Now it's not all lost, as you can tell, we're still in the playoffs. But I truly thought we'd win every game we scheduled. I didn't schedule a game I thought would would be a loss. Okay, number one, they're going to try to draw you off sides. Okay? And they do it a lot of different ways. Number one, they'll do it from a robust shift. Okay? Yeah. And at the same time, yeah. line them do the Dallas, Dallas Cowboy thing. Yeah. They also do a Michigan punt from uh, uh, motion, <laughs> from a middle protector. What's that now? Okay. You know, Michigan punt, then the middle protector takes off and goes in motion to one side or the other. Okay. Uh, they did that against Shy Motion. Any short yardage situation, they try to draw you off sides with the Dallas Cowboy deal. Okay, you got to practice this because they're pretty good at it. We had very few fans at the last game, very little excitement building before the game. It wasn't even announced at our school that we were having a game. Uh, nobody came to the game virtually. That, but that's okay. This game, it needs to build up a little bit. It needs to be more enthusiasm, more excitement, and that's what we're looking for. If you've seen somebody, know somebody's done something that you really are proud of out here, and you haven't said it, this might be your last chance. Uh, I'd like to say good job to Steuben this whole year. He's been doing a great job for us, and uh, he's probably got the most pressure on him out of anybody out here. He's handled it great all year, and uh, just he's, we're going to go as far as he takes us, so good job, Steuben. Look at 13 weeks, how quick's it gone by? What's another four? This game, consider this a week, tomorrow's game. Ever since we're little, this is what we've been work working for, this is what we've been waiting for. And it all comes down to this. And I don't want to let it pass it by. And, uh, I know this won't be our last episode. The other thing I want you to seriously think about doing after what we did this week is really, really, really be a grenade jumper and look for chances to jump on. You might only get one or two. Maybe you're a special teamer and you get a chance to go knock somebody on the ass so that your running back doesn't get hit, Brown doesn't get hit on a punt, or on the kickoff, you may only have one chance. You may be only on one play and that's maybe a kickoff return where you get a chance to jump on a grenade to prove that you're an unselfish good person and you care about your team. Look for that chance and I think you're all going to get it. Did you cover the shovel pass on the PAT? Mm -hmm. Field goal too, they use it too. Sierra's a good team. Uh, for us to have a chance to beat them, especially in the way we've been playing lately, we really need to find a way to come together as a team and have somebody do something special. It's scary to see what, what could happen because I think it could go either way. We can come in there and stomp on them or it could go opposite. They come there and stomp, stomp on us. It just depends on the feeling during the game. Got a 
couple things to talk to you about. On any fourth and short situation where they line up, you expect them to do what? So back off, get off the ball, watch the ball, be, be distant. Okay? You know they have a fake PAT and field goal, shovel pass. Uh, no, they got, got speed, take good angles. Uh, all that stuff, you know. Now, I'm going to say this to some of you, I think it's going to fit. It's a, it's a high school football game. <coughs> it's important high school football game for us. It's a big part of our life. Coach D and me and the, the coaching staff, it's a huge part of our life. But, high school football game. I didn't used to. I didn't used to realize that. I used to think it was bigger than that, Chase. You believe Coach Mack would do that. I used to think it was everything in the world. Okay? It's not. It's real important. It's not everything in the world. Being a good person, your mom, your dad, your brothers, your sisters, Friends, that's important, really important. And I didn't learn that until I lost an awful lot of stuff. I'd have given up the season to have my dad one more day. And he died in 95. My best friend was killed in a car wreck after a horrible life and finally got things straightened out. And my very best friend of all time was killed in the prime of his life. I'd give all my seasons away to have him back for a week. Have Johnny back. There are things that are important. All right? So sometimes I get carried away, and I think this is life and death. This is, my friends, some of the most fun you will ever have. And that's what it's supposed to be. It's supposed to be so glorious and so exciting. It should be something that 20 years from now we get together and say, remember that Sierra game? Those guys, everybody thought they'd beat us, and we just killed them. We hit them so hard they wanted to give up. Those kind of things that are important. <coughs> got just one story for you, and I think you guys heard this before, but I, I like to think about it in times like this. i got to tell you, this morning I was nervous again. I was real nervous. Kyle will tell you, he and I are both walking around like idiots who couldn't talk. I had to go out and stand up a horse for about 40 minutes and talk to him. He wouldn't listen. Sorry. <laughs> this happened back in high school. Had a kid playing first name, John Nathan, wonderful kid, quarterback. Remember, I remember the story. I'm sorry for reasons. I mean, it's always good to hear from me. He uh, was our quarterback and strong safety a year behind me. And I was a junior, and, and my best friend Johnny and I were the leading receivers in East Texas at the time, having a great year. And... Uh, John was a backup quarterback that year. He started the next year, but he was backup that year. And a good athlete. And I never saw his parents. Never saw his parents. And never thought much about it because he wasn't really a next real close friend of mine or anything. But one day I saw him after practice getting in his little car, Renault, little tiny car, with two midgets. That was his mom and dad. John was deformed. He had a small arm. It wasn't tiny, but it was smaller. And he had a small leg. He was still a great athlete. About six feet tall. Still a good athlete, but he had, he had those little deformities. Well, his mom and dad were genetic midgets. I knew that. Well, it's cool. You know, I thought that's kind of neat. It's towered over and everything. Uh, later, after the season was over, John invited me to his house. And basically, he wanted to ride home to that car. I took him home. And I go in the house. And there's this little furniture for the little midgets. You know, a little table with one big chair for John. It's kind of funny. I'm not kind of shocked when he says, says uh, Don, I brought you here to meet somebody. So, takes you back in a bedroom. And laying in the bed was the most deformed kid I ever saw in my life. I mean, it was machines all over him, and genetics had played a cruel, cruel trick on John's brother, who I didn't know about, no one knew about it. All right, he lay in that bed, and I walked in, and his eyes lit up, and he was so excited. And I'm going, whoa, well, I, didn't know, I didn't know about this, I know what to say. On the wall, fellas, was something I'll never, ever forget. The rest of my college career, the rest of my high school career, I always remember this. On the wall was pictures of me catching passes out of the paper. I was like something special to this crippled little kid. And I talked to him, for he was very bright. Uh, mind was fine. His body was just a for life. He died a few years later uh, while I was in college. But I always remember that, you know. It always gave me something more to play for. Something more than just myself, my own selfish greed and pride. It gave me that little kid sitting in that bed. I share that with you, man, because I want you to play this for somebody else. Let's do it. Let's play for somebody else. And I know with people sitting here who know exactly what I mean. There's somebody out there that needs you. Let's play for Good evening, welcome to Jefferson County Stadium. This Class 4A football playoffs between the visiting Sierra Stallions and the home team Green Mountain Rams. After the Rams go three and out, Sierra goes on a clock-eating drive. The Stallions easily march down the field, getting a sizable amount of yardage off a broken running play. 
On the very next play, Sierra punches the ball into the end zone for their first touchdown of the game. At the end of the first quarter, the Rams are down 7-0. As the second quarter begins, the Rams almost immediately strike back with a long pass to Ryan Brown that puts them in scoring position. Two plays later, Green Mountain runs a draw and it easily scores. But regrettably, Jen misses the extra point. The score is now Sierra 7, Green Mountain 6. but Sierra comes right back with their own big play and gets 45 yards on the ground. On the very next play, the Stallions score their second touchdown with a fade route to the corner. But they too miss the extra point. At half, Sierra's ahead 13-6. At the start of the third quarter, the Rams' defense starts to tighten up and it begins to look like they're getting the momentum. About midway through the quarter, the Rams have completely shut down Sierra's offense and forced them to punt. Green Mountain comes on an all-out blitz to try and block the punt, but in their overzealousness, they miss the block and allow the punter to take off running. Untouched, he goes to the end zone to score another touchdown. At the end of the third quarter, Sierra takes a commanding 20-6 lead. The Rams are in a hole and their season is slipping away fast. Then with just over 10 minutes left in the game, something surprising happens. Realizing that something drastic has to happen or they're going to lose, Andy Steuven, the quarterback with the selfish attitude, asks Coach Mack to run a special series of plays. This series calls for Andy to take a couple of sacks in order to set up the defense. Andy, the last person expected to do this, has just volunteered to jump on a grenade for the team. As per Andy's request, the line doesn't block anyone on first down, and Andy takes a 10-yard sack. On second down, they do the exact same thing, but this time Andy gets rocked. It's now third and 25, and Coach Mack is starting to second guess letting Andy talk him into running these plays. But Andy stands tall. He knows this is what he has to do. Once again, the line doesn't block, and Sierra's defense comes pouring in. But this time, Andy throws it, and it works like a charm. Andy suckered the defense into going after him, leaving Ryan Brown wide open. On the next play, the Rams score, and suddenly Green Mountain is back in the game. Andy's sacrifice might just have saved their season. But now with only 5.15 left in the game and down by seven, is there enough time for a comeback? The Rams' defense shuts Sierra down and forces them to punt the ball back. Now with 2.48 left in the game and 92 yards to go, could the Rams do the impossible? Andy takes control and drives the team down the field, first by hitting Ryan Brown on a couple short passes to the outside, then going to Kyle down the middle to gather some huge chunks of yardage, moving closer and closer to the goal line. With just 30 seconds left, the Rams are in striking distance. On first down, Coach Mack calls for the quick out. Andy rolls out and hits Kyle as he breaks to the flat. Kyle dives and scores the tying touchdown. The game is headed to overtime with the score tied at 20. In high school football, there is no sudden death overtime. Each team gets the ball on the 10 yard line and gets four downs to score. If both teams score, they do it again until one team scores and the other doesn't. Sierra gets the ball first. On first down, the Rams stuff them for only a two-yard gain. But on second down, the Rams collapse and Sierra scores. Making the score Sierra 27, Green Mountain 20. Now it's the Rams' turn to try and tie the game. On first down, they try a draw play up the middle, but Sierra stops it. Then on second down, they try a quick in, but get minimal yardage on the play. On third down and five, they try a quick out to Kyle, but still end up three yards shy of the end zone. It's come down to fourth down, and the Rams have to do it here, or they go home. On the snap, Andy drops back, but the rush storms up the middle, forcing him to roll to his left. 
As defenders close in on him, he spots a receiver breaking in the end zone. Andy stops and heaves it, but it goes wide. The Ram season has come to an end. I'm proud of the way you fought back. Some great things happened out there. Some guys came back and had a, had a shot. I've told you the three things to win it. Uh, fundamental block and tackle. And staying together as a team. I think you stayed together as a team. And we, we I mean, fake punt down there. Beat us. But, uh, guys, dang it. I mean, you gave everything you got. You got all into it. Uh, I told you to do this as a team. I hope everyone here still believes this is a team. Uh, please take care of those seniors. Oh, well. <laughs> I know it means a lot to those seniors, and uh, I'm sorry we didn't do do it all, but I'm, I'm very proud of you as people that will always come first. If I ever, if I ever not proud as a person, then uh, something's wrong. You got to admit you guys are good people. Please take care of yourselves, you guys that it means so much to. Uh, please understand there's other other things in life, and, uh, and uh, this isn't the end of the world for anybody. I mean, lots of things for all of us. Out there, and uh, I don't, I don't have anything up there. I love you, Dad. God, what a great way to fight back, though. You fought back beautifully. You did a great job, and I'm just super proud of you. I love my coaches. Great job, coaches. Uh, don't know what else to say. All right, let's uh, let's learn from everything that happens to us. This is something we can learn from. So, it's going to be hard to overcome, I know. Hey, we'll overcome it, guys. We'll be okay. We'll be okay. Please, please keep doing the right things in your life. Please. All right. Please be the good people that you are right now. Don't really think change that. And it will come to you eventually, somewhere down the road. Okay. Uh, Coach D, anybody else need to say anything? Let's go. <clears throat> that was our dream was to have a great football team. And I, I think it's important to survival today's world is that you always have a goal and a dream and, and uh, are willing to pay the price. I learned a lot about my friends and about my friends' dreams and my own dreams and my dad's dreams and hopefully most of the stuff will carry out through the rest of my life. This is a poem I did years ago. Uh, it happened after I finally had my first son of a kid that I'd coached. Uh, first kid I'd ever had his dad way back in junior high school football and finally I had one of the sons. It's called We're Just Old Coaches. We're just old coaches, you and I teaching those young guns to shoot for the sky. Just old coaches, you and me, out in front for the crowd to see. And some of those watching weren't always so kind, but we're just old coaches, so we pay them no mind. Yep, just old coaches, you and me, not real pretty and certainly not much to see. 
And our job's real simple, at least we're told, take all those youngsters and make them bold, make them champions every time, do that coach, and you're worth every dime. But those in the crowd don't really see why we're old coaches, you and me. The bonds of closeness you have with a the team, they can't understand. They couldn't even dream. And taking that tiny freshman with his anxious eyes and watching him learn to reach for the skies. And then as a senior, with his diploma in hand, he grins as he passes, and you understand. You gave him discipline and the ways to achieve the ability to dream and the guts to believe. And then as the years pass, it happens again. An anxious looking freshman with a familiar nervous grin. Ah, oh, coach, he says, I'm scared, but I'll give it a try. Hey, and by the way, coach, my dad says, be sure and say hi. <laughs>